got my glasses on because I've been sat down running some numbers and I thought I'd just share some ideas with you. So this is focusing now on the strategy of cash flow versus capital growth. So as an example, I could show you a, a property in the middle of Sydney where I might buy it for $600,000 and even if I rent it out, it may not produce a positive cash flow. In fact, I can tell you it won't produce a positive cash flow for me. Um, similar situations occur if I went to Singapore, for example, and bought myself a four or five or six hundred thousand dollar apartment. There's no way I could get enough re rent to produce enough cash flow for me. The problem is the yields are very low, and the yield is basically gross annual rent divided by the purchase price of the property. That's a very low yield. If I do the calculation, i.e., rent minus mortgage, minus other costs, what's the net figure at the bottom? Now, uh, where I'm based here right now, if I took a trip up for about two hours up into the Midlands or the north of England, I could actually buy a property for about 100K. I could put five tenants in that, produce a rent of maybe one and a half to 2,000 pounds per month. If that's dollars, you can double that, I guess, roughly where, based on where you're at. Take off my mortgage, take off my running costs, and keep about seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand pounds a month. That's a good cash flow. Now, what I wouldn't get there is the capital growth. So, whereas if I buy a property in the south, in Bristol, in London, some of the eastern uh, eastern areas, sorry, the southern areas, I know that those markets will go up in value. Whereas if I go into the middle of the country, the north of the country, what I've got is a situation where the capital growth is flatter. In the south, it might be like that. In the north, it might be flatter. But what I'm getting is the cash flow. And if I buy five or ten of those, and they're producing for me. 500 to 1,000 pounds a month, I've got somewhere from two and a half to 5,000 pounds a month net cash flow. If I took you to Sydney or Melbourne or Adelaide or Perth or somewhere like that, yes, we can buy properties at a high price and potentially we can get capital growth, assuming the market does allow us to grow. But what I wouldn't get is the pure cash flow. Even if I went to New Zealand where you can get some cash flow, you probably wouldn't get as strong a cash flow as you might do here in the United Kingdom. But you might get that mixture of cash flow and capital growth. Again, it depends if you're looking at a standard rental property or a multiple let property where, yes, it would actually produce more cash flow for you. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is this. If you want to live from your portfolio, actually, the chances are you might be living in a country where that cash flow from those properties isn't going to be achievable. And that raises the question in your mind of, well, if it doesn't work here, I can't make myself financially free. And that's not actually true, because the big question you need to ask on the back of this video is, OK, if it doesn't work in the area that I'm living, is there another area that I can get it to work? And the answer is yes. And I had to do that even based here in the United Kingdom. So if you're looking to feed your kids and create a financial freedom status, that means you're going to have to live off the properties, which means you can't buy properties that are based purely on capital growth. All that capital growth really does for you is sometime in the future, 15 to 20 to 30 years when you're a little bit older and you've got your Zimmer frame and you've got your thick glasses or whatever, you will be able to cash in, i.e. sell those properties. Of course, you've got tax attached to that, and then you can pull whatever profits out, and you could argue you could live off that. But my question is, why would you want to live 25 years in the future of money that you started earning today by putting it into the capital, i.e. wait, when you could actually build a portfolio that could feed you today and look after your lifestyle today and live off the benefit of that, albeit you wouldn't get as much capital growth in the future. There's a provocative question. Which would you prefer? Would you prefer cash flow now with some capital growth in the future or no cash flow now, maybe even have to support it and the hope that you've got more capital future, capital growth in the future?